Hello Curious. It is said that Disney theme parks are the happiest place on earth. There, the fun is endless, the number of attractions can turn your heads, and the number of visiting tourists is counted in millions. But there is one park where you will not see Disney animation mascots or amused kids with ice cream in their hands, but rather you will feel like the world straight from a thriller. Located on Discovery Island, it evokes terror, not joy, because it was closed over 20 years ago without any official reason, and to this day, it is one of Disney's biggest mysteries. Conspiracy theories about it, trying to explain why it happened and the whole atmosphere of mystery around the island is further fueled by the fact that tourists are not welcome there at all. Immediately after the closure, an order was issued that prohibited getting close to the park on the island, but despite this, there were a few people who decided to check out what was going on there. What did they see there? What does Discovery Island look like today? Is it possible to explain its mystery? Find out all about this mystery island in today's video, but before we continue, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. In 1965, Disney purchased the island in the middle of Bay Lake, Florida. It had previously been owned and used by the Raz family as a farming and hunting resort. When it became the property of Walt's conglomerate, its purpose was to change completely as it was decided that one of a kind theme park would be created there. This was a huge undertaking and hundreds of trees and tons of boulders were brought in from China, South Africa and even the Himalayas to expand the island and create a whole new landscape on it. After nearly 10 years of construction, on April 8, 1974 to be exact, the new Disney attraction finally opened and was named Treasure Island. Since there were no bridges connecting the island to the mainland, the only way to get there was by a regular ferry or by taking a Walt Disney World cruise, which took tourists around Bay Lake and one of the stops was the newly opened park. Anyone who reached it could feel like they were in a real pirate world, filled with shipwrecks, buried treasure or secret caves. Despite the huge interest of visitors, over time it was decided to completely change the concept of the park and in 1976 it was reopened, this time as Discovery Island. The pirate theme receded into the background and the focus was more on the natural resources of the site. Visitors could see and even touch birds walking around freely, including many individuals of endangered species. The park hosted animal shows, treetop tours and built a huge and breathtaking birdhouses. Other attractions included an alligator swamp, a flamingo lagoon and enclosures for monkeys and lemurs. Discover Island served not only as a park for tourists, but also as a place where wildlife conservation was promoted, and this resulted in accreditation from the American Association of Zoological Parks and Aquariums and the recognition of the island as a zoo. For years it was one of the most visited Disney parks, with visitors' numbers exceeding all expectations. The crowds of tourists drawn to this part of the United States led to the construction of another park not far from the island called Animal Kingdom. It opened to the public in 1998 and almost a year later, something puzzling happened. Discovery Island, beloved by tourists, became inaccessible to the public virtually overnight and its gates were locked with no official reason given. Animals were relocated to the nearby Animal Kingdom and some were also given to zoos in various parts of the country. The closure of Discovery Island came after nearly 25 years of operation, and on top of that, not only were all tours of the park banned, but people were prohibited from approaching or boating within 16 meters of the shoreline. Anyone who violated this ban could expect criminal proceedings to be brought against them. Not surprisingly, the closure immediately stirred up quite a bit of controversy and became the subject of numerous conspiracy theories attempting to explain what actually happened on Discovery Island. In the course of investigating the case, several startling facts about the island and Bay Lake came to light. For example, it was discovered that a dangerous bacteria capable of infecting a person's nervous system and leading to death had been detected on its waters. In fact, due to it, a tragedy occurred in the 1980s and an 11-year-old boy left this world. However, this did not happen on the Disney's park grounds, but in the nearby River Country Park. For quite a few people, this incident, as well as the presence of bacteria in the lake's waters, may have become one of the reasons for the eventual closure of Discovery Island. Another theory, on the other hand, sought entirely different reasons for the move with those who believe it unanimously claiming that if you don't know what is at stake, it's all about the money. Although Disney itself did not admit it, it was claimed that the opening of the new and huge Animal Kingdom in 98 caused a serious drop in profits at the island zoo. After all, the new park was filled to the brim with exciting attractions, 
and it was also quickly and conveniently accessible by car, without the need for an additional boat ticket. All of this likely contributed to a serious reduction in the number of visitors to Discovery Island, and ultimately the closure of its gate as it became unprofitable for the corporation. However, the reasons for this could have been much more controversial. At the time, information came to light about the appalling events that were taking place in the park. The place, which was created as a refuge for animals, actually became a prison for them with inhumane ways of treatment. In 1989, an anonymous person reported to the veterinary services that birds were not being properly treated at Discovery Island, and the investigation that was launched only confirmed these words. Some employees, including the park's chief superintendent, Charles Cook, were found to be engaging in unlawful behaviour such as beating and shooting animals. Birds had their nests destroyed and were kept in reprehensible conditions. Investigators at the park discovered a small metal shed with no windows or ventilation, where up to 70 vultures were confined to a time. The birds fed on expired food, had no perches, stood in their own feces and were not allowed outside for days. People interviewed admitted that not all animals managed to survive in such conditions. When asked why, Cook said the vultures attacked other animals, were noisy and often defecated on paths meant for tourists, so he simply wanted to eliminate them. At the conclusion of the investigation, the Orlando State Attorney filed 16 charges of bird abuse against Charles Cook and four other employees. This was a serious blow to Disney's reputation and it was revealed that all incidents were scrupulously concealed from the park management. However, the company refused to allow the lawsuit to go to trial, so they paid the nearly $100,000 fine set by the prosecution. The incidents of animal harassment caused a huge scandal, so they could also have been one of the reasons for the park's closure. However, as we mentioned, Disney itself never revealed the official reasons for this decision, and the aura of mystery and numerous theories circulating about the fate of the island sparked a lot of interest in the place. The ban on the island only fueled the curiosity and several people, unconcerned about the consequences, decided to see what was going on there. Well, for some time, after the park was closed, there were unlikely to be any reports of trespassing. In recent years, this has become almost a regular occurrence. Bloggers, photographers or YouTubers, tempted by the vision of seeing a place hidden from the world, started to get there in different ways. In 2016, photos from the abandoned park were published by photographer Seth Lawless. They were taken of a drone, but the author did not escape the consequences and was banned from visiting Disney World parks for life. A similar punishment was meted out to a 42-year-old Alabama resident who was arrested on the island last year and charged with unlawful entry. But perhaps the most famous story about an illegal trip to an abandoned park involves blogger Shane Perez, who got there with a group of friends in 2009 and published the account on a blog. In his photos, you could see that the park must have been abandoned in quite a hurry because many things, such as photographs, office supplies and animal feeds were abandoned. The buildings were left alone and without maintenance fell into disrepair. There is no trace of its former glory, but interestingly enough, despite the fact that no one lives on the island, it is lit from afar, giving the impression that it is not extinct. Although Perez was not apprehended on the island, he was still charged with trespassing and banned from Disney theme parks, and no information was given as to whether he suffered additional legal consequences. Interestingly, there have been rumours over the years about Discovery Island reopening, but there's no indication that this might actually happen. So the abandoned Disney park continues to deteriorate and shows a slightly darker side of the happiest place in the world. Do you think it's worth risking the rest just to see Disney's secret island? Do such abandoned places inspire fascination or horror in you? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Until next time.